Uh, we'll call the Monday, August 17th, 2020 meeting of the select board to order. Um, <coughs> we'll, we'll welcome, let's see, we have a professional observer back here now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any changes in the agenda? Uh, we have one guest online, 802-745-9416. I'm not sure who that is, but you're welcome. Okay. Are there any public comments at this point? That's feedback. Okay. We have one uh, agenda item to add, which is the length of tax attorney. Right. Okay, let's start with the fun stuff. Mark, update on the town garage concrete work. And everybody got their diagrams that you want is nice enough to print off. Okay. So if we can find this one. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Right hand. Yeah, yeah, turn it upside down. There you go. Makes it more better. Okay. I'm gonna go up and make sure that they don't give us a bad time about the doing thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So with uh looking at that. Uh, we've been talking about doing a trench from the far right door where that starts there, about four feet in, all the way down to the other end where there's a pipe that's already pre-existing right there for the drainage. You make one long trench all the way down there take, and come in from the doors, come in six feet, remove that existing trench and concrete there, and then tie in um, another trench and... Uh, and concrete in there so that we have one continuous uh, trench all the way down through. When I was there today, let's see, look at, if you look at this one, this one can kind of explain to you the kind of what it is. I'll hold it up and kind of explain it too. The overall from the doors here in is 72 inches or six feet in there. And then centered is a trench, which is 12 inches wide. It says 16 at the top. That's to accommodate the, um, the metal grates. You can see a little step down here, then that's where those grates would sit in on there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the overall depth would be around 22 inches deep for to accommodate enough concrete underneath and around the... Uh, the trench in there and these lines in here with little square little dots that's the rebar reinforcement uh, uh, steel in there and uh, where the dots are those would run the full length all the way down through okay yep. now when I was there this morning looking at it going to this one here this diagram here <coughs> that one Okay, what I did is I looked at it, and this is, you can see where it says the doors at the bottom and the entry and where that center door is where we, yep. most people go in and out of. There's a section there that's not even traveled over for trucks and stuff, and I don't think, when I remember when I was in there during the wintertime painting and stuff, I never saw much for any water there. So I don't think it really needs to be that section is almost, what, would you say 20 feet? 16? I, did, I should have measured it, but I, I kind of 20, a but... thought I'm, I'm, I'm going. But what I'm hoping to do maybe is end the trench that we just explained from the four feet in from the, uh, the far right side and stop it just past the, uh, the fourth door over. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm watching>. <laughs> <laughs> and discontinue the the trench per se for that length until just before the other door starts 
over here and uh, and cut out a 16 inch swath of concrete in there and, and then put pipe in a schedule 40 uh, pipe in there, tie them into the, each one of them. And that will save us uh, a good chunk of change on concrete and uh, and um, a rebar and other stuff like that uh, to, in the price so I can readjust. The price that I'll give in a few minutes uh, covers the trench all the way down through on that. Yep. So I got a question. Yep. The break between door two and three, you, you got it cut out there also? Between <laughs> door two. Yeah, you got a little connect. Connect drain crank. What's that? No, that, uh, try to be looking at this one because that's an old diagram there. And I was just using it as a reference so we can understand the, the, the building and but stuff like that. But that would that would go all the way down yeah. through there. There wouldn't be a separation like that. Yeah. Gotcha. And this kind of indicates that with the blue line. Well, I don't know if it showed up. It didn't color on yours. It's a little darker on from when Susan's okay. got right here. Yeah. So it's a little darker showing it. Uh, I put blue for like water in there to come all the way down through. But this would be separated here and here to uh, just to, uh, cut out the concrete, dig it down, and tie in the two uh, two trenches as one. And again, like I said, it would be saving a, a good chunk of change for, for that. Now, I was quite surprised in, when I was doing the pricing uh, for the whole thing that uh, I, I went through from Country Home Center, um, Johnson Farm and Garden, and RK Myers. I used those three to get my pricing from. Some stuff, uh, Johnson Farm and Garden couldn't, they don't do two by fours and lumber and stuff like that. but. Uh, um, I did do the rentals and stuff like that. Um, so we've got all that. Where's the steps right here? So the process would be pressure washing the surface, measuring in six feet, and then what we do is uh, take a chalk line, snap a line on it, then you take some clear uh, polyurethane, cover it so you don't erase it when you're cutting it with the, the wet saw, and then you start cutting the floor out on it, and then um, into manageable pieces. So we can lift them up out. They're usually the first one's the hardest one to get out. Then that you can get to claw underneath and get the rest of them up out. Um, I figured in a two-day rental on a mini excavator to do that. I think it would work good enough and it would set it out into the parking lot far enough. Or we could load it into a bucket on the on the backhoe and, and take it away that way. And uh, um, so it'd be 20, 22 inches down is what uh, we'd have to dig out the dirt down to underneath it. So like I said, you've got four to five inches of uh, concrete underneath, or at least surrounding the whole uh, ditch uh, trench going down through there. Then the uh, time consuming thing would be drilling and anchoring rebar into the pre-existing co uh, concrete on each side. It'll take a while to do that. I, looked, I know that the town has a hammer drill and I looked in also to uh, um, renting one too, to have, just to make, get the work done faster. I've got an industrial hammer drill. Oh, okay. So that'll be great. And then um, um, anchor the rebar in as the diagram shows. Um, and then we'll have to construct the plywood form, which will be quite a feat. Now, when we're doing, we're setting the form in, we got to remember to raise, as you face it, the right hand side, what is that, east side, um, to raise that up three inches at least, because the floor overall drops three inches from that one side. You and I checked it that day. You remember, was it three or three and a half? I think it was three. Yeah, that's what You're I recall. The ditch, you're saying. The ditch, ditch is going to be shallower on the east side if it doesn't just the side. Like yes. Yes, so it drains properly, yeah. And the nice thing is we can accommodate that a little bit better if we go with the two trenches right. instead and, and do it with the pipe right. in there coming in. And then once you get the, um, the form set and everything now, another thing too, we'd have to be using two by fours to go across to, like, to carry that uh, or suspend that uh, trench, that box for the trench in so we can pour the concrete and that's got to be up off the ground i figured about a half inch so we could trowel underneath it and make a nice smooth surface all the way down through on it and uh uh leveling the forms and then um, secure the forms and then pour it 
And we're going to possibly, let me go back to the diagram here. If you look at this one here, when we take out this dirt in here, we're going to lose some from underneath this pad right here. And there's no way you're going to be able to stop it from coming out. So what we'll end up doing is using the, with a concrete vibrator, it'll float underneath here and, and act as a bridge underneath there to help support the floor in there. Questions? Good job, Brian. So the, the pricing for it, okay, um, you look, materials alone around uh, 83, 8,338 is what I came at. Um, and then the labor, Ron helped me out with that. If we, um, if we choose to use our, uh, fill-ins or our subs or, uh, winter help, whatever, uh, that come in, um, it was going to be about $2,100 for the labor. And I figured it for a week for five days. And that would be the people who are tying the rebar together, people who are drilling the, the concrete, well, taking the concrete that. out, that type of thing in there. <clears throat> and uh, if you want to take this, it's Chola Bird. <laughs> I told him I had a meeting tonight. Uh -huh. And, um, yep. No, I'm just thinking myself. Yeah. Okay. And then now I've got one bid and I got to get another one, but um, Leo's or uh, LWI. For the grates, they were going to be in three foot sections, so they're manageable. So if the guys are going to pull them out or anything like that, it isn't too awful heavy. Um, that was $7,800 for that. And I want to talk to uh, Dave Vylord up there in Northside Park since he's a paying customer or a citizen uh, that maybe we can get a price from him too. And then uh, I'm waiting, um, trying to think of what the two. Um, companies where there was it'll come to me through the mud but there's two companies that have the tanks and I think we discussed that uh, they had a thousand and a thousand gallon tank on each side and now we're going to go with one we discussed that we think 1500 gallons would be uh, enough to handle the volume of uh, water coming out of there do you have any they were saying 2,000 gallons, and I figured, well, if you put it into one. <clears throat> and what I'm thinking would be coming off the trucks at any one time. How many gallons do you think you'd be putting out at a time? I can't imagine we'd fill a 1,500-gallon tank uh, just from one run at a time. But it's going to leach out of that tank, right? It's going to come out, yeah, and it's going to go over, and it just separates the oil and stuff. So I think it would handle it. Fine, and uh, it's the reinforced tanks. So if if the crew has to go drive over it, it'll be plenty supported. Okay, I'm still waiting on one from um, Shea Shea Concrete, um, waiting for a price from them. And then the other one camp. I got Camp, yeah. And then Camp uh, is uh, was yeah seventy seven fifty, so seven thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. For that price they gave us, I was hoping that Shea would, a uh, uh, Dave Beauregard, I think it is something like that. And I was hoping he'd get back to me before now, but uh, he was texting me back and forth, want to make sure he got the right uh, tank and stuff like that. And so uh, it'd be apples to apples when it comes to that. So, uh, um, but anyways, I went with, uh, I actually put down eight thousand, so it gave us a, a little buffer zone type of thing. And so the total for labor, materials, um, the only thing that isn't in there is the Schedule 40 pipe that hooks from the building to the tank, oil water separator tank, and from the oil water separata separator <clears throat> tank to wherever it's going to daylight, um, which is $20 a piece. So it depends where we tie it into that pipe that's coming out. I, I, took, I did take down... It's here somewhere. The measurements that, uh, oh, what's his Brent. name? Yeah, Brent yeah. did. It was 20, uh, 20, 36 inches down, I think he said, and it was out so many feet uh, where, you know, that pipe was and stuff. So we can find it and attach to it and then tie it in, saving some more money uh, there doing it that way. 
And then um, that tank at the most would be five feet deep. So you got five, six, seven, eight. If you had three feet of uh, of uh, oh. coverage, the backhoe should be able to dig that out at eight feet, starting from the far side and working, or from the middle and work your way back. But you want to keep one side clear so they can back up with a truck, bring it around, and set it. So, what are you thinking? So is the tank going? Well, I would say that it would go the same length as the weight, weight, width of the road. I mean, as the building goes, it goes out that way. And I know, well, no, you don't have multiple, like a regular sewer system ports. You have to come in the end to the end and then just aim it out. And then we can angle if we have to. And I'm thinking if that pipe, it comes out the end, we have to 45 it or something to make sure it lined up with another 45 into the R22, whatever, into that tank, it'll still work. As long as the pitch is here on it. Did you have a total? And the total is. <laughs> that alarm, that <laughs> alarm system and everything? That's, no, nah, that's not the alarm system. No. We should put alarm system in. <clears throat> so that'll be another thing. I'll make a note of that. That's how you want to install, right? Well, the same thing on solar. Right. That's not good, I guess. <laughs> um, so $26,258 I had. Okay, now on the, on Jim Bradley and Pat Towns estimate. Uh, $20,000? $20,000. $20, Twenty thousand. What did that consist of? <clears throat> that just of, of the uh, concrete forming it uh, inside and pouring it. Um, no grates. No what? No grates. No. No grates. No no no, no. no. no grates. No. Or tanks. No. When they tank, when yeah. they got done, there's gonna be a guy. Yeah. So it's almost. Huh? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. The uh, let's see, right? Who's doing that? I had in um, because Mark's concerned, I think a lot of us are concerned as we get further into the year, how much time does this take? And I just wondered, and I and I asked Brian about it if we can hire our part time guys to do that so that we don't take the or or somebody else like that to do it. I think my biggest concern is we got you know lost a month with a corona thing as far as what we could do for us, you know, as far as you know with the governor's order as far as what we can legally do is a big concern as far as we're already a month behind before they go on any side projects. But, so the other way to look at it too is um, their wages versus the part-time wages. Yeah. No problem about it. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't. I no. I think we ought to talk about it now. <laughs> you know, it's just well, if we I decide to. Then I want to go into such such such. Talk about it now. About who we're hiring? Because I. I, again, I think whatever we decide, we should get the input from Mark now about his advice as to what we do. Because again, it's just where this, where if we're a month behind, okay, but if we have them do it, we're going to be further behind, and this will probably be a week. I'm I'm planning for a week. That's yeah. what I planned yeah. it for. And that's if everything goes well. Things never go well, so it takes a week. Shoot something out. We'll come back to this. Okay. Just shoot something out. We're already. Overdue. Oh yeah. You can't be more overdue or overdue. Looking at your drawing, what why couldn't we do up to the door, like you said, and come out and into the tank, run your pipe in this winter between storms when, when the guys are really not doing that much? Finish your paint two sides. 
We can't get the truck in and out. We're not going to want to leave them out there in the cold and have them out. That that is a good. Uh, what are you saying? Depending on the temperature that we got, your truck should two freeze weeks, up. Two weeks. Two we'll weeks. In the wintertime, you're saying? No. no, I'm just I'm trying to get. If, if I, he said when that in two weeks, from the time you start it to the time you end it, you should have it done. Two yeah, weeks. yeah, I, I agree. I was thinking more of a. There's a lot of time left this this season. Yeah, I mean, I I would I would think once you start it, you want to do it. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the trucks being outside, most definitely. Because once we start <clears throat> start the cutting and stuff like that, that uh, you don't want to be driving over it. Yeah, and, and who can predict the weather, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. All we need is a another Halloween storm. Any any thoughts? Uh, is there anything I missed? You were right there every day and stuff like that. I'm just trying to see if there was anything. I tried to think it through every angle I could figure uh, on it to try to to get it. You know what, Brian? We could sit here for another hour, and there's something you're going to miss. So, uh, <laughs> I agree with you 100. <laughs> percent From all the jobs I ever did, the stuff you just that's, can't yeah, see. Yeah, that's right. There's always something that happens. Right. Well, that's 10 percent for it. There is a there is a factor in there. There is. Yeah. There is. Yeah. 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 The, right. Yeah. And and and, and a lot of my figures, not a lot, but uh, three of them at least. Now the concrete that's coming in. One thing I want you to know is four hundred four thousand psi pounds per square inch is where we're going to be pouring it at. So it's even. It's probably stronger than what is already there. Yeah. Just so you're aware of that too. And uh, and uh, Harrison provided me the bid for that. I didn't try a, a second bid, but they did really well with us, and they gave us a, a, a price. Yeah, I told them it was for Town of Hyde Park. And uh, I told him how what the yardage was, and um, and like I said, it was five thousand three hundred sixty dollars, which is a big chunk of the the materials, obviously, which it would be. Then you've got your rebuyer, which costs a fair amount, but I couldn't believe the difference in some of the pricing. I'm glad that I did the well, the three. Harrison's a customer, member, so yes, 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 definitely. Okay. And I had a good okay. a good experience with them on those jobs in the village, so. The drivers and stuff were very helpful. So, what do we need? Motion to on the thing or what? Yeah, I guess. I guess we got a plan. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if we want to go ahead, I'm not sure what you need to talk about in the executive session. We need to decide do we want to have the guys do it or do we want to have other people do it? If you want to move and have the guys do it, that's fine, but. Just, just to be safe, figure we're losing another two weeks of other stuff that they could be doing. I, I, I'm, I'm for the guys to do it. And the rest of them. Do it. It's a, the regular, the regular full time. That's yeah, I'm yeah, right. That's what, yeah. right. Dave, that's what you want to do? Uh, yeah, I think it's a time to do it. It's, it's a, <clears throat> you know, unless Mike, you can come up and show us it's something that's got to be done. Now, I know every day could be a... That's right, there's always something. Right. Or something, but I mean... Well, I got my stand here finished. So you got, you know, a good three weeks there. Just getting that done, at least. August and this bridge is five weeks, right? Yeah, don't worry. We'll go into September. Into September. <clears throat> There's two thoughts I'm having. Is one, I the the other people that were first talked about um, the fill-ins or the temps uh, doing it. I don't know their skill level. I know that we have a very good skill level with the current ones we've got. And uh, I've seen some of the stuff that they've done in the shop and stuff, and they're very crafty and, and, uh, and building things and, and doing things. So I can see the skill level being better. I wish one thing I had for everybody to see was the comparison between the two for the, the crew doing it 
money wise versus the uh, the temps doing it. But the other side of that coin is it could cost us more time because they don't have as they're not as right. skilled as is. And I, I'm yes, just right. I'm guessing yeah. they're not as skilled. Maybe another thousand dollars. Thousand dollar different, maybe. Yeah. So we'd be looking at twenty seven well, thousand per week. Four, right? okay. Yeah. <laughs> One a week is a thousand. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now the drilling that would only take two people. I'm just looking at that the uh, the volume of the. I was going to do uh, have somebody cutting steel and then uh, while they're drilling. And then uh, putting that uh, as they're cutting it, putting it in there, and drilling it. So yeah, I guess we would be using them all at the same time. I was trying to think if there was something else that you know the day would only have two people, but uh, pretty much everybody would be something to keep them busy constantly. So talk to us about your thoughts about what we're talking about. I want to hear from you. I want to know what's going on in your head. And and you you explained to us. I heard you what you said about the sand. Well, I got the sand. I got the turnaround down at Norm Andrews. We got to figure that out. No, and you said that. I want to figure it out because so, I last thing I want is any hard head. feelings you're trying to go into this. My head where we're going to put this. Like I said, we've already lost a month in the get go. We haven't done none of our deburment. Well, did some, but not nowhere near. We've got. Two culverts we gotta change. And I'm hearing there's all kinds of time left in construction season. I see it coming to an end. But I see everything that still needs to be done within that period of time as well. To complete everything you've got, you're saying you've got a full plate. I got I ain't gonna be able to complete what I got with my full I got you my gravel one on Cooper Hill. We still gotta resurface the Jones Road where we for our FEMA. Yeah. The, the flats done by Brian's farm up to the, up to our problem. Roberts to yep. Brian's. <clears throat> We've got a pretty full plate. And like I said, our beginning didn't help. You know, and it was all, we couldn't do anything. We couldn't sweep. We started everything up a month late. So I'm, that's where I'm at. Like, I'm looking at everything, thinking we already started, lost a month. Yeah. And I see it that winter's, you know, it's approaching fast. Yeah. So. So how do we proceed? Um, are we going to break it down into should we have the town crew do it versus in the boat or should we do it as one whole package as the town crew doing it and if it passes i mean i'm trying to figure that out well i think i mean it, it seems to me as though uh, the majority here want the town crew to do it <laughs> i have no idea how the town crew feels about it um but if we do that then something else is just going to fall by the wayside and we just need to accept that and then not be all over Mark and the town crew because whatever falls by the wayside. And then maybe what we need to do is, is I mean, since this really is a priority, is go ahead and get this done um, and then say, here's what the time looks like and, and prioritize the project so that we don't decide what doesn't get done if something's falling off the plate. Ryan, when you got the twenty one hundred dollars labor, that's what you figured. Down I labor. figured it for a week based it on the, the that that's the, the guys that we've used in the wintertime as, as our part time help. That's our part time help wages. Okay. Now how accessible are the the three people, right? I'm thinking that we've got that we would be available for this? That's another thing. I think it's a big question if we can get hold of them and get them to, to do it, too. Well, it sounds if, so if, they, if it, they don't want to do that. Interesting. They, but yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I, I don't really see we have a lot of choice here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We, we either got to pay a lot of money to have somebody else do it or have our guys do it. So the, the it, it would be to move that we would um, proceed with the project for the oil water separator with my proposal 
with a pipe between those doors in in the thing rather than a ditch all, a trench all the way down which will lower the cost yeah. and then to put in the oil water separator the the town crew will uh, assist with the uh, excavating of the hole and the running of the pipes in between there and the town crew will be doing the labor for said project right so move i think that's it you guys got it does anybody want to move? David's <laughs> just doing some math down here. And that's just what the town crew. Yes. That's what he just said. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and then we're going to put a 16 inch swath where the entry door is instead of having tr uh, uh, the, right. the track or the right. grate all the way change. down through right. there. So women with high heels can not go. Right. Yeah. But it, it's a, it's a legitimate. It's a legitimate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so he's just so we need a motion to do that. Are we having more questions about it? Why you want motion again? Yes, yes. I'll get even with you. Um, <laughs> so what what would happen is we would excavate the we would remove the concrete six feet in from the doors to a point where the doors end in that center section that's in there would be just a 16 inch trough. I mean, a 16 inch uh, removal of concrete and a pipe connecting the two. And then the rest of it will be trenched down through there with a uh, grate over it. So it'll be great, a trench with a pipe buried in it and then another trench uh, going down through. And then it hooks up to the pipe, it's pre-existing at the end of the, the building and then it will go out and then the town crew will also, uh, they'll remove all that concrete and then we'll uh, get out uh, side and they'll dig the hole for the um, um, oil water separator tank to go into. And then the piping will hook up, they'll, they will hook up the piping and then they'll hook up the, the part that goes out to daylight, the piping in there and they'll help with the concrete and the rebar inside of that. I think that's everything that needs to be. And the tank. And the tank, yeah. So we'll... Yeah. They miss it? Yeah. Okay. They have seconds. Okay. And we got any more questions about it? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Oh. There, solved. Well. <laughs> so, you coming to these meetings and you being here is, to me, is super important. Yeah. Extremely right. important for you to be here and to communicate with us so we can work with you yeah. uh, the best we can to make sure that things go as smoothly and alleviate stress. I think that's the biggest thing. And try to move forward on everything. And I think you could see that we tried to cover all the different areas and everything. We tried to work it out and tried to get it so that it uh, um, was the best way to, to do it and stuff. And and so we'll we'll make it work. We'll make it work. And I've done enough jobs in my life that I'll make it work. And I think my skills will fill in any void or any concern as far as getting things done in there. I've trained a lot of unskilled people over my day. I think the last time I calculated it was 27,000 people. Okay, we're on the third of okay. three here. Okay, the paving bids. Paving bid results in the FEMA yes. drainage repair. So the bids came in at uh, this here. Um, Whitcomb was nine hundred and five thousand dollars even. So okay, that's with what period? That uh, where did the bids go to? Right there. there. Yeah, you got some there, and I think there's some over there too. Okay. Quite the road. 
<laughs> I want to say thank you. <laughs> now, let me let me explain something that I realize, and I I want to take my piece of the the fault of it. Um, when Ron explained to us that we had this bid to put out, I remember him clearly saying that. Uh, uh, I'll get it out to you, you guys review it and get back to me. And I didn't get a chance to review it. And in my head, I was thinking that I had already talked to Ron and sent him some of what we were looking for. And I was assuming that that was what we're going to end up with. And that keyword was assume because I, um, we didn't account for what the policy uh, is that the town has uh, has taken upon themselves uh, on when they're putting in roads. And one of the things that was that I wasn't aware of until recently was that uh, uh, adding the the width for bike lanes and other stuff in there. And apparently that's in the policy, right? Well, you can't afford that. No, I'm not saying we can or can't afford it. I'm just saying that that's that's my history on and my understanding of it. Yeah. as the liaison yeah. um, I do wish that when there was an issue or when there was a contractor there um, about it that I got a call as well to go up and review it and it might have hopefully could have brought some light to it or something like that Dave got called in on it but I think it's because Dave lived right close by it was I thought I was catching Dave on the way to work <laughs> so you know, my view on it we could go and get as many, I'm sorry, cards that people did on <laughs> yes, yes, and send did. it to these contractors because we all screwed up. We did. Yes. We did. And, and I didn't read it. And uh, uh, we got to start right, right from ground one. Yeah. 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 And apologize to these guys and, and say we're sorry. We yeah. And when they were here today, I think they realized <laughs> that, that, that we had screwed oh, up. And, 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 and then the conversations that we had. Um, with them and stuff like that, and there were certain ones that put in gravel, yeah. some that didn't put in gravel, and and that sort of thing. So you can't, like they were saying, their words were not apples to apples. Right. right. So and, I think technically, what we have to do is reject all the bids and yeah. back up and start again. Yes. That's technically, like that's what we're expeditiously yeah. as possible due to the season and yeah. the time we were yeah. in. Yeah. Well, they're not going to do it till next year anyway, right? They're not. Not today. Oh, they're going to comp, yeah, grind and then comp, no, but no. no. We're going to put the culverts in. Put the culverts in. It's all a bit. No, let them set for winter and repave next spring. What well, well, this stuff is make... coming on fast to me. Yeah. It's coming. <laughs> well, nothing's really set in stone for your board meeting. Right? Yeah, I mean, that, that's right. So, all... so what, what I need, first of all, is we probably <laughs> technically we need a motion to reject all the bids, right? I should enter the results into the record first, since okay. you had a bid opening. Okay. And then we can go to discussion. Right. Okay, and so, the end. so so I'll, I'll go through. So uh, Whitcomb again was uh, nine hundred and five thousand dollars even. <laughs> Hutchins was five hundred and eight thousand five hundred and twenty six dollars and ninety four cents. <laughs> SD Ireland was eight hundred and four thousand four hundred and twenty dollars even. Pike, they came in at three hundred and seventy-four. Uh, I'm sorry, three hundred and seventy-eight thousand eight hundred and ten dollars even. Okay, so those were the bids that we got, we received, and we won't discuss uh, the FEMA uh, ditching yet. We'll no, focus on this. That. Right, right. Let's do this one first. Yeah. So okay. I move to reject so the bid. Ron's got them all. You got yes. them all in? All set. Okay. No, I'm talking about oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fourth and fifth are here. Okay. Okay. Wow. With the, we send cases of beer to all the people that did or something. <laughs> With a straw. And... <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Well, what's important If anybody's watching, I want to apologize. Uh, yeah, that's right. If, you know, the... Uh, the really important thing is, and it sounds like they understood and from talking with Mark and I think we talked to the guys at the time realized that the contractor realized that we had made a mistake um, and that 
we learn something from it. That's what we need to do in the process that we need to go when we've got something this major going on again, is to have. <clears throat> but did you? Have you're talking about Center Road it. only with those numbers. No, those they included some of the others in here. Well, yeah, there was a um, Cleveland Corners. There was a Fitch Hill. I can write that down. So this, your, the numbers that you read were on for the total five sites for the total for all of them. Okay, so it was Prospect Street, Sterling View Road Loop. Yeah, Center Center Road, Cleveland Corners Road, Fitch Hill, Prospect Street, Sterling View Loop. Okay. Sure. I think that's it. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Huh? Okay. Then haven't we read the, the bids two different things all this time? I'm sorry, what do you mean? The same bids, when I came in. Well, we'd already done the other ones. Uh, people uh, had stuff that they had to do today. And uh, we couldn't take naps in the middle of the afternoon and stuff, so we... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with that? Yeah. <laughs> the pavement bid opening was at 1, and the FEMA one was opening was at 1.30. Sorry about but being checking. But you added them two together? No, no, you don't no, add no. the two. They're two separate uh, no, entities. Ron just said that the five sites and paving. It wasn't, paving. Paving. It wasn't, it wasn't paving. clear if he was reading because they were broken down by project. Yeah. It just wasn't clear for the minutes whether he was talking about Center Road or all of them. So the, the 378 for Pike was all five. Uh, yes, so I believe they, all of them were for all. But they reduced the scope on different. But it, it's not apples to apples, like yeah, I said. Not it's something. It's a lot different. Wickham, Wickham figured on the thirty foot. What you know? Yeah. We don't. We so just really, really got to go back to apples. Right. No. no. Okay. But Bretton's actually he's listening. If they have any questions for Paul. Okay, so we. So I don't think there's any. So we rejected the bids. Yes. Now we need to go back and start again. Correct. What's right. what's what's the twenty four feet wide? That's so I and think I think we need to look at our policy and procedure, a policy based on the roads, to make sure we're following them because we don't or want to get into trouble. It's a conscious choice not to. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. can have a policy and you don't have to follow it. You just have to say okay. Right. We just can, want to make sure there's yeah. no consequences for not following right. it too is what I'm thinking yeah. in Sometimes my head. There are. Sometimes there are, yeah. Well, Dave said that you said there's only three inches of white top on that. Just drain it. Go ahead and get ready to go out. Wait, wait, wait. I didn't see three <laughs> inches anywhere. Let me. Let me. All right, one time. Never end. Oh, one time. Hold your hands up. Because I said Jay Hopkins. Yep. Hey, Jay. He was here today. Yeah, and uh, Bretton and Renton, both those guys from Hutchins and Pike. Pike. Pike told me today, or told us today, that there's really no need in grinding that road because there's only two and a half or two and three quarter inches of surface on it. Just shim it. You get your shim it and go. Now, they told me that. PJ told me that. That would work. Mark told me that. Rose told me that. I'm going to get blame you don't have to do it. <laughs> you know, no, really. Just you make got, sure. You've got three inches of blacktop and two inches and a half or whatever there is there. Shim it and blacktop and don't bring it. And like make a, sure you have it, a rubber tire roller. He, 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 don't so leave you some of back. Wait, wait, wait. We'll I shim. just need one person at a time, please. Okay. EJ, EJ told uh, told me or told us today, just roughly figured, no more than any figures, but it'd be somewhere between a hundred and hundred and ten thousand dollars to join that road. Okay. So, so I'm going back on March thinking because I'm saying that if there's a divot, if there's a pothole and stuff, if they miss it, it's gonna follow it. We're gonna get potholes to think. I think you would have a better road. But if you're taking a hundred thousand dollars, if it happens in ten years, you get the money to pay it again. So okay, but now, so now we're we're back to square one. I was thinking there was <laughs> like yeah. one inch. You can watch uh, the way. I have to explain something, but the way the bid was done, you can pick and choose out of those five results. So if you canceled something that didn't look right, like Center Road, yeah, the other bids may be simple they may be actually good bids so you didn't get to the point of a motion yet but you have a choice of rejecting them all because center road was off 
or rejecting center road and keeping the other four because we have to move forward with Fitch Hill right. this right. fall because of the water project at least. Mm -hmm. And then you can rebid anything you want over the winter. We don't have to push a bid on center road necessarily. I don't even know if they'd hold a bid for seven, eight months at this point. But oh, that's good oh. idea. Keep keep the ones and just do the center road. Well, it's, I mean, these are choices you have to make. I don't know if we could do it tonight because it'll take all night probably figure it out. But it, it would save time to spend a little more time during the day to walk through these and then decide on whether you want to it's award it or not award it. Broken down by. Yeah, they are right here. Look, look so this is the way it's laid out. One and see, they got each one of them are laid out there. So. Okay. Okay. I think you definitely have to do Fetch Hill this winter. Oh, yes. Well, the other, I mean, <laughs> well, they're done, they're done. I'll say that for the other, the other, oh, wait, wait, the other, the other option, which is what you sort of said as an apology, you could bring those contractors in and walk through the five different roads and see if any of those bids make sense from a competitive basis. So you're looking for more information from the contract. Right. Cause you all heard it. Or some and they already people, said that they some would. people heard it on the road. Some people heard it on the phone. It's really not the best way to make a decision, but you could say, can you come in at uh, noon or 10 o'clock and we'll meet with Mark and I'll meet with you and you and whoever, whoever spent the time to put the bid in as a thing is almost a thank you that we're not going to throw everything out, but right. maybe there's something good in there. That's my concern is there may be a good bid that's totally competitive and you're going to throw it out and then we're, you know, a time delay type thing, especially with the Fitch Hill timing issue. Yeah, that's good. I agree with that one. There's nothing wrong with meeting with the contractors and have everybody in the same room to hear. <laughs> I think they'd want to, especially with the confusion that was started in the first well, place. Well, they, they may want to talk or they may not, but you can offer it. Yeah. Right. All right. Where are you? Yeah. But center road. Right. Okay. Well, the, so, wait. <laughs> so, so someone will, con what we want to do is contact contractors we'll offer it we'll offer oh, it to okay. meet with them and see what time works best for everybody at center road uh that was bid on a on a really uh, two different things when you reconstruct and reclaim and rebuild the road you're talking about the complete streets and widening the road. right when you change your mind and go to overlay there's no consideration for width you do your 23 and a half foot yeah. that's all you got yeah. see that see the two different worlds you were sort of right. playing in okay so. but center road okay one of the of the thoughts, Dave, and this is where you started in because it's coming fast <laughs> and furious. Should we, and this came I get from talking with the contractors, do all of the culverts this year, fill them in, let everything settle, and then pave the whole road next year. And, and fill in with black top for your culverts. Yeah. Right. That's pay this fall. Yeah. Yes. When would you I, be I filling agree. in? Would you be I doing agree. it this I year, filling in for the culverts? I agree with that. Yeah, you're saying filling in this year. For the do, like four, four, I, I, I know that part. I know they're, that part. I'm just they're going to patch it. Patch it. Yeah. They're going to let it set, let it down, down, let it settle, and, stay and since we're not reclaiming it, then we can right. just patch it, and it'll go right over it. And, right. Yeah. Right. Come and then and go. Do it. You'll be done. There's only well, <laughs> you got to reach up, I <laughs> scream yeah. a little bit too. Not doing the rest of the culverts this year, or is that? Yes, that we'll be doing all the culverts this year. Now the only question that brings up to me: Do we do we uh, bid the second half? You have to legally. You have to legally what? Legally, you have to, to do this bid, with the rest put of the, the bids out for the other culvert for the north side. Well, yeah, for the north side, yes. The um, only grant constraints we have, which is the only grant we have pending with VTRAN still, but they put everything on hold due to COVID is $175,000, which would, uh, they expect us to follow our policies, which are part of the bidding process. So for the taxpayers, if you don't have a grant, they expect you to follow your policies. So the, the threshold for compliance is a little higher with grants. Taxpayers uh, expect you to do it, but there's more flexibility. So by law, it's really related to the grants by policy and doing the right thing and getting the best dollar. You should bid out anything over ten thousand dollars. Right. Oh yeah. So it's a, it's it's maybe not law is the right word, but it's it's good practice to continue to do. So that, that big color there, the six footer, or yeah. whatever, that's okay to put in now. Yeah, that's, that's clear. All, that's all clear. Yeah, that's right clear. Right. So it's ready. It's really, really good. So I, I think that's the way to go. It's uh, it's it, it is. This next paper comes out. 
But all of this is what I'm talking number of things. So I'm going to look at it again in my head on the north side. But a bid out, so the guys can bid on it, give, give them a week or so to get the bids in. They'll come down, we'll read the bids like we did, and go it. The only thing I would like to see is if they do the culverts and we put that thing out to bid, add in there to fill them back in with black. Because these guys are going to be doing this. They've got other things going on. So yeah. We yeah. can't ask them to fill them in too. No problem. So if we put in the bid on the second part to fill them in as that they go or when they get done, however they want to do it. Fill the whole road in, not just what are that? The, with the, yeah, with the, well, you could do that. I, no, I don't think you could do that. Really, didn't illegally. You could do it with the second part of the bid. Because you've already been. But the first part has already been done. Yeah, yeah that, say the second that was part. chlorine and gravel patch. Right. Yeah. So you can do a change order for them to do the asphalt. Yeah. Let them cost you a little more because it's a change order, right. but it's. Yeah. Let them guys fill them in the blacktop and then <clears> do it. The town guys don't have to mess with that. Right. Mark, one of my one of my concerns are is the way it's bid out that uh, they have to compact it in, in lifts in, in there like that. How do we make sure? How do we make sure that uh, that it's done appropriately? Well, you'll be watching. Well, that he can't be there every minute of the day. I'm just well, wondering. Usually, that's usually what, these guys are pretty decent. Well, I'm hoping. I, I'm hoping. Yeah. Usually, these guys are pretty decent. We'll, we'll know in four or five years. He pops in every couple hours. Yeah. Three hours, or they'll they'll know it's his routine, and then they'll yeah. You know, he knows they start digging the culvert in the morning. About ten o'clock, they're going to start putting that thing back in, so he pops in while they're coming come back. <clears throat> but if if you do that, you're gonna, which I think we should, get the bid out right now for payment for next year. You, you think any contract will hold it? Bid that. One hundred percent. They just bid Fairfax for ne next year. Last week. I I agree with him. Wow. They they don't know what their plate's gonna look like right. next year. All these guys, are, they'll all bid it. Well, there's two ways you can bid. So if somebody's bidding now and you don't allow for the adjustment. They won't do that. <laughs> do you know what I'm talking about? So the, you mean the pricing the adjustment for yeah, the so material? The oil prices go up and down. A lot of the bids will come in with a fluctuation number as the price of oil goes up and down. They get paid more. So it doesn't matter when you bid. You're just securing a schedule if you do it now. But you won't be able to bid at a set amount. That they won't do that because they can get killed if oil. Usually goes up. February is your soonest. Yeah, they want the acceleration number in there, which is fine because we do that anyway. Normally, I'm just saying that you're. If you get a sixty-three dollar a ton bid now, it may not be sixty-three next year if the price goes up. It may be it will be accelerated to match the change in oil, or or it goes the other way. People want it could go the other way. Never know about oil. So, a the invitation to the contractors to come talk about the paving. B to put out a bid for the rest of the culverts on. I think that's the accelerated road. one. Yeah. The paving one could take a little time if you're going to bid it over the winter or later this fall. Well, I'm thinking of the, no, this one. The stuff that we've got up, well, you're right, because the only, well, the chill's got to be done. Yeah, there may be good stuff in the paving that we want to make sure is good or not good, and yeah. then rebid what's left for next year. Okay. Good. I think that's how to look at it. And the, the, Covert work for the north half is accelerated. Yes, I gotta, like, I gotta go home and type that up today because the deadline is right. know, noon today for the Thursday paper. So, Hillside Drive would need more than an inch on it because that's not even a fill in now. The road cross from your place goes down in the bits for an inch. Is that a good gravel there? road, maybe? Do we reclaim that and put it to yeah. gravel? Well, <laughs> we also there. It's Hillside Drive, right across from Rollins. But the way that is, you know, an inch, you're not going to go, you need more than that, so it's the shape of the rules. Yeah, you know, like the rules. I don't know, I go to see a black dog myself. I'm not saying that to me, but right there in the village, you'd be grading it, and you'd be chloriding it. I mean, uh, it's sort of out of the way because it's, yeah, it's an oddball. Thoughts, Mark? 
Brenton said that they could do it, you know, bit it nail and have it eight inch square foot. And of course, a lot of them are hungry for work before the, the first anyway, so they're best. Right. Best time to do it in the spring. Right. Everybody's ready to go. Hungry. But you get, you know, if we put our bids out earlier before they get there scheduled, it'll help part of the, the price tag. Okay, so you have a plan? What do we need for motions, Ron? Uh, we need to deal with the bids. So yeah, so you, I, would, I, you would defer action yeah. for now in lieu of the, you don't have to, I guess, you don't really have to take any action. You're just going to have no action, okay. but the plan is to go and meet with the contractors on paving and then come up with a decision of which okay. ones are awarded or which ones are. So it's not a motion. We're just, no, we're, we're, just all agree, we're all agreeing that we're going to go and meet with the contractors yeah. and yeah. Okay. hammer it out, get it figured out, and then, yeah. and then we we'll get come back here. We can do a special meeting. That's, you know, I think we're either yeah. that or phone yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. right. But we can yeah. get everybody on the phone. That, okay. And the second part of that is to put the bid in the paper for the mark side of the book. Right. Yeah. Right. Ron goes home and types yeah. it up. Yeah, there we go. And, and with that bid, it, with that bid, the add on would be is the patch. Patch so, tape. Right. Yeah. But it's all we want to dig it. Yeah. And whether he gets a bid or not, I would presume he's going to be close to the so you want these? Yes, please. Okay. okay. There's that. And that's the motion. But apparently Sorry. we don't have to. Well, except we need, we need the motion for the, you're right, for the. Yeah, to go out to bid on the, right. not on the paving because we're okay. not there yet. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Dave moves it and Roland seconds it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Phew. Oh my goodness gracious sakes alive. <laughs> um, okay, the Dickens Road grant in a erosion control. Okay. Dickens Road. Everybody knows the story of Dickens Road or do you want a refresher? <laughs> hey, did we just skip though the oh the, the drainage the yeah. drainage part you skipped drainage oh yeah we yeah. Skipped drainage. yeah I was gonna Whoops. say I, they're, they're right here I'm... that's right that's this stack okay what happened on that I mean, yeah what happened okay what happened on that is on the other side of this piece of paper <laughs> would, would you like us to get you bigger paper <laughs> <laughs> I'll spring for a notebook for you if you want. You're all <laughs> um, <clears> hard. <throat> Hutchins. On the FEMA drainage um, bids, $88,159.75. Blowing Cody, $130,900.65. Those were the two bids that we received for that work. Eighty thousand for the bid. Eighty-eight thousand. Eighty-eight thousand one hundred fifty. That's ninety-three and a half percent covered by FEMA. No. Ninety-two point five is what we've been told. Okay. Now, what happened to the Well, between the two bids, and, and uh, it's enough for a used excavator, Mark. I think I'm better go with Jay Hutchinson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, we give Jay Hutchinson a lot of work. Yeah? Yeah. Is that $50,000 difference on that? Um, yeah. 50, 40. How many feelings is this? 43. You want to spend $50,000 more and do the same thing? You're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like. I think, but I think you get it. It's sort of like, you know, you can get carbon don't, monoxide don't poisoning. Don't forget. Don't forget. He was supposed to be here in the middle of the month. Yeah. Okay? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. And now he's not here until the end of the month. 
So maybe if he's got too much work, maybe we ought to think about something else. Well, but, but they uh, but they start date on it. They start date planning so much today for the start. I mean, you know, I don't want to be rude here, but my way of thinking was when you called in that night, he was going to be here in the middle of the month. Yeah. That's true. No, and maybe he's got too much work, which is fine. So we got a local guy here that's been on it. Maybe we ought to go with Mark. They do a good job. Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they don't. And, and you know, the reason they put these out for bed is to get low bed. Right. But people. Well, or to, or to get a range. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a heck of a range. Well, and FEMA may be paying for it, but that's still right, tax paying. They can pay here in a second. <laughs> it is, it's money. There's no doubt about it. But I would find out when Hutchins can be here to start doing this. Because last time it was, you know, we put a date on it that you've got to start this day. Last time it was two weeks later. Well, something like that. I got just a dollar figure for which birthday he's inside. Nothing wrong with that. Call him, ask him when he can get going on it. He's, he's low bid. And if he says, I can get going first next month, that's when you get a say. Or it's going to cost you money. I do know he's on vacation this week, he said. Yes. Well, EJ said it because he's on vacation. So when, when do you think we could think because if we could move it make a motion when it gets done with and then and the start date. But how long will it take to chat? What's on the map? It'll take a couple weeks. Two weeks. Well move it. So I don't I don't think we should say it should start date. I think we should say it wants to be done by a certain date. Well, the bid was out with must complete by October fifteenth. So that's what was bid on. Yeah. You can't ask for any more than that. That's pretty quick. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's okay. okay. I think it's good. I think it's fine. Yeah. yeah. There, there is some flexibility in everybody's schedule. If Mark begins to feel nervous, it ain't going to happen. He should be coming back to the board. Right. Okay. Make a motion, Dave, for it. Now make a motion to set the Jay Hutchins bid at eighty-eight. Eighty-eight thousand one hundred and fifty-nine dollars and seventy-five cents. One hundred fifty-nine dollars. <clears throat> 75 cents? Four cents. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I think a bid should go out and also should say it's got to be completed by October 15th. They'll be in the contract. They'll be in the yeah. contract. Or we ought to put in that there'll be a hundred dollars a day fine for now. Is that okay, huh? Uh, hold on a second. Checking. <clears throat> yeah, they'll have to. That'll have to be an add to the. Yeah. You think I fear, Mark? Yeah, I just know you could do it with that bid. You accept it with that? Can you yeah, it wasn't. It, usually, the bid would say something about a penalty. And it's it's in the paving bid, but not the. Excavator bit. Yeah, so it's not there. I don't we can, know. we can, I don't know, we can talk to him about it or something, see yeah, if he objects. Okay. But. Yeah. okay, we got it. All right, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Yeah, so no kind of, Dave, just to clarify, your um, October 15th is in the bid, it'll be part of the contract. If they want to go past it, they can ask for a change, and then you could put in whatever you want. Okay. See what I mean? Okay. So you're sort of covered, I guess, you're concerned. Okay, now back to the Deacon's room. Roger, how are you doing? Hi, uh, yeah. You know? Holding in there? <laughs> <laughs> this is probably the most stressful thing you've done since you've been no, out of the hospital. Three items, two items have gone through. I don't know what the hell it took any of you, but it calmed you down. Jesus. Uh, uh.
Okay. So, so what, what is the history of any, anybody that needs history? I can give a pretty quick summary. About five years ago, the select board was being peppered with individual requests to do something that hill. Part of it was from the highway crew because they're up there every three, four inch rainstorm. Part of it was from a handful of the neighbors up there. There's about 20 plus or minus landowners. And then the other half of the landowners said, don't touch it, we like it the way it is. And so there was never any strong commitment to do the, to the upgrade. Now MRGP comes in, we have to control erosion on class four roads. So that's, the, that's one of the things that's changed. I talked to a landowner up there, the split in the neighborhood hasn't changed. There's no new request to upgrade that to class three status and talk about widening it and doing some improvements there, trying to lower the grade, which is almost impossible at 13%. But Mark does need some help to try to stop the erosion. Because I, I, every time I hear the three, four inch rain coming and it gets hung up on that McKinstry Hill, Diggins Hill side of town, we know we're going to go up there and pull a bunch of gravel out of Jim Fontaine's yard or down by the, down by the brook at the bottom. So. GIA is a new grant that the state of Vermont gives to each town based on mileage. I think it's based on my, there's a proportionate share that every town gets based on the road conditions by mileage or something. So it's a formula that spits on about 15,000 every year to <coughs> Hyde Park, which we have to make application for through regional planning. And Rob Moore is the contact there. He has, he manages it, he comes out and meets with Mark and he has to come up with a plan and it's really about drain, stopping the erosion so that we're not, and usually that's a big rock. It's maybe a little bit wider ditch. Maybe it's a, an extra culvert crossing or whatever the thing. So that those are all done with Rob and Mark and they're proposing, uh, I don't know what the total cost will be, but it's probably around $20,000. And we'll get 15,000 from this grant program. Uh, the idea was that, uh, the selected contractor, if they're in on these other FEMA projects, would be asked to just expand that contract to include this. This one has an October 15th deadline, this particular grant money. No grants extended. If you miss your deadline, you're, we'll see you next year. So we'll leave it on the table is kind of their policy. So rather than take another separate bid process late in the year, that was their thought, is that we go through this bid process with the FEMA drainage and add that one. It's about five, uh, they call it five road segments, but it's, anyway, forget about that. So that's the idea of the GIA, you'll hear about it. Uh, that's the annual new program. I think Mark's okay with it. I think he walked it once or twice and uh, Rob Moore is waiting for confirmation on whether we want to do, of the five segments that were identified, whether we want to do all five or less. I think we do all five if we could. <coughs> so, so taking this FEMA a project, and you just wanted whoever the winning one, obviously, would be uh, Hutchins. Ask him if he wants to do this. Yeah, I mean, he has to put some price. That's yeah, I, I, contract understand. Amendment that makes I understand. I understand that. <laughs> what is your assessment on based on what will happen on that road? Would be a fair cost. No. You have to think about it. I'm putting you on the spot for it. What I was going to say is, <clears throat> I've always learned as a contractor, if somebody just adds an extra, that's where you make up any losses that you do, or you can make up a good chunk of money. You're right. So you set ahead of time a figure, and if it exceeds that without telling the contractor, then it'll have to go out to bid. <clears throat> I'm trying to guard the purse. Right, but it's, it's a relatively small project, right? I mean, if we're talking, what, $15,000? That's the grant. 20000 20, 20, yeah, would be yeah, about. So it's 5000 of, of the tax, tax right, dollars. So 20, okay, 20000 If it comes at 20, if, 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 would that be our cap or, or what? I'm, I'm trying 20. to figure, all yeah. of a sudden he comes in at uh, 32000 for it. Well, that's that's where the one, two, three, four, or five came in. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. Just we can do. Yeah. So whatever we leave on the table, we leave on the table. So yeah. If the price is 
choices are great and we can do all five and it works. Get it done. If it's if he's not throwing a price, we can just forget about it for this year. I didn't hear that Mark had time for another project to add. <laughs> you know, so it's kind of like the contractor time. You know, yeah, the that contractor. you have to rent or hire somebody with an escalator. It's yeah. Too much lead, lead drop to place that back. Over on that left hand side up on that corner. There's no wait for our back to really dump red lead drop in it. Especially in that pitch. Ron, the money will be there next year? No, the, the state money goes away every fall. Okay. October 15th, uh, to get it fully completed, sorry, no extension. That was from Rob Moore. Well, when you get the grant, then you know, then I'm glad it's no grain or not, not to do it. No, I think, you know, getting prices from whatever we can get it done, whatever Mark can pull with a, with a FEMA drainage person, or whether Mark thinks a segment, <clears throat> two segments can be done by his own crew, I don't know. But it's 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 a it's sort of I even talk about taxpayers to leave the somebody's going to get that money if we don't get it. It's yeah, one of yeah, those programs. Yeah, yeah, they'll send it over to you yeah. know Williston. No, I agree. Yeah, agree I to, to yeah. use the money even to just to. And those ditches are out of compliance. Right? Fire they, yeah, fire erosion in certain spots. When you and I are you up got, there, you got a few more years before you have to put them in, right? Uh, not really. We have until twenty twenty five to finish. Yeah. 15% of all our failed segments. And what percentage are we at now? <laughs> we actually might we actually might be getting on to 15% already because we we were already in mode mode of talking these things off. Yeah. Before the MRGP came yep. in. Yeah. But they're using data from before. Oh good. You know, like five, six yeah. years yeah. ago. So the data hasn't been updated. We keep on picking up. First meeting we went to Susan, that was oh I know. But I, I wouldn't worry about the MRGP. I think that's its own little animal. But so we go added. forward. We go forward, and I would use up that. We get that money. Yeah. Rick Mark's got a lot of it up there. He's got a lot of it. Wow. Yeah, this is just authorizing Mark to work with Rob more okay. and make sure Rob's the one that has to approve all the work. So we got to kind of bring him along with the project. Okay. Um, you probably need a motion for that. I'm sure. I move that we uh, ask um, Hutchins to uh, give us a price on uh, the uh, FEMA work. It needs to be done on the uh, Diggins Road grant. Okay. Okay. Any more questions? So much we get done. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Four down. Phew. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it's on the agenda, but we had a question on the roadside mower Brian and I talked yes. about today. Yes. Um <clears throat> We've had some concerns based on what we've seen in the uh, uh, ditches and stuff like that. Uh, I talked to Mark about it and he was telling us that once the primary cutting is done and then they go back, it'll be a smaller uh, branches or whatever you'll be dealing with. One thing I saw and I didn't realize it was out there is a unit that uh, literally goes on a boom on a uh, excavator or a, a wheeled excavator, it could be either, and it chips everything. It doesn't chop it, it chips everything. I believe chips would be better than brush in our ditches for several reasons, costing us less money for having to remove those pieces or having to fall behind and chip them. Uh, uh, again, have to chip them uh, over, and then it will clear up or keep our ditches a little clearer in the first place, and cause less cl uh, clogging or blockage of our uh, of our culverts as we've experienced up on the center road up there. The device, from what I saw, it was a video that I saw of it, and I, if I had more time today, I would have uh, got that clip and sent it to everybody, but. Uh, it's probably four or five feet wide 
and probably two or three feet deep, I'd say. And it just goes up against the trees and it can either turn and go down over them or it can come right up and just chip everything. It turns it all to chips. It only takes in a certain portion and so it makes it into a chip. So it doesn't cut it off into, into chunks. Oh, I was going to say, so it doesn't look as horrible as it well, yeah. currently do. Well, that's, that, was big, that was a big that was a big concern as well, I think. I, I just didn't yeah, like the... Trees don't look the same way. Yeah, well, we had, remember, we had him come in, Brian Shaw, up there to, to Jones. Yeah. He's got a whole new different yeah. right now. But he came in when he had that one talking to us, and it was a thousand, what was a thousand? No, a thousand dollars a mile on one side. We were doing 16 yeah. miles, 17 miles. So it really wasn't cost effective for getting around town. Right. For the price of that. Just we did that yeah. before. Remember, he came in and it was it was it was thousand thousand dollars one way. But personally, I think to keep the brush out of the ditches, and I may be wrong. I might get some shot at me. Is when Mark or whoever goes down through and zing 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 behind it, the other three guys we got that chipper going behind them and chip what falls into the ditch. That's an option. That that's definitely an option. That's one of the, the most cost effective thing. We haven't. But so we can take, you know, like the culvert inlets in order. We can take a clam in the back of, you know, we'll get right up and hurry up. Yeah. Wouldn't, be, wouldn't be the end of the world. And you don't, you don't get that great big concentrations of branches everywhere. Right. It just comes in. Yeah. places, yeah. 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 And like I said, you know, we're about around now. You know, it was, as we all can admit, it was overgrown, it was past new, it was, you know, we're taking out some big stuff. Right. Okay. It shouldn't be that bad next time around because you're taking it, you know, just a yeah, small, yeah, small stuff. Right. 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 You've done the damage already pretty much. You know, does it, <laughs> does everybody know what I'm, do you know what I'm talking about yeah. with, with the thing? Let me see if I can go this a little bit further it's ahead here. But when we looked at that, it was that really wasn't cost effective so that's where we were at. It's going to get smart with a pot of bags, take it out back here, and ship it to sell the ship. <laughs> oh, they used to take them all that's, that nice. That's, that's what we're talking about. Okay, yeah. You take yeah. the whole tree okay. and it can just take it right to the chips. Okay. Who was that? You want to catch a label? Yeah, I know you would. Who was that? This one here? Yeah. They just get it off of YouTube and just run it up. Oh. So I, I don't have anybody don't know, that. You don't know Bradshaw. And this. They had him young for That's what you were thinking as well, what I was talking about. Yeah, well, that same idea of what Bradshaw had. Right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the one he had in the beginning when he came up. Yeah. It was a lower. lower yeah. yeah. But the one he had over on the right. The one he had over on the right. Yeah, he could go all the way down there on the right. He even gets called it. Huh? Even chewed up the culvert. Really. Oh. <laughs> Metal? Well, I can't chew anything to get in my life. Okay. So. So if it's cost effective to go the other way and then come behind them and pick it all up. And... Okay, that's what we're going to do. Well, I know that, you know, when we looked at it before, the tractor was definitely a lot more cost effective than the estimator. Yeah. Okay. Where are you going, Randy, this year? Well, we got a Fairfields. We're set in with Fairfields because everybody was filling up. You know, truck it up at the same price as, I think, last year. 33 a week. Unlimited hours. 7,000 in the budget. 3,300 a week. Unlimited? Yeah. That's why they do yeah. paid right the overtime. And run it much longer. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, how many more years, or I guess it'd be years, on the first cut passing? I mean, right? I think this year we should be around. Really? That's good news. Yeah. yeah. So all the big stuff we got. Here. Yeah. Stop right. Little stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> So, yeah, because I looked it up I think we started in 2016, so it'll be five years cycle in the town. 
and if you double your mileage because you're not slowing down for four or five inch stuff. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting part to see. I mean, who knows who go around, but you're not taking down, you know, I think we've taken back a little McKinney Street Hill stuff right now are pretty amazing to me to see how much it already grew back. Yeah. But you're not taking all that, right. you know, it should be totally different look to it too, I would, I would imagine. And you go faster now because it's just a small percent, right? Yeah, after the, what, the, the first cut, you'll be yeah. faster. Okay. So cleanup yeah. crew added. Cleanup crew, right. Uh, the hazard tree grant. Yeah. Yeah, does. The schedule for that, that was September 26th to October 5th or 6th. Or something. I don't know. It was those two weeks on, on the right. beginning and end of the month. Yeah. Okay. Uh, has a tree that's a, a Vermont urban community forest program offers two or three different grant programs every year we've taken advantage of some of them if you remember uh five four years ago now five years ago we did ash borer mailing and we tried to get people yep. prepared because at that time it was just in southern I don't even know if it was in Vermont four or five years ago the current map for the ash borer is all around Memorial County there's breaks in St. Albans, St. Johnsbury, and Washington County, Caledonia County. So if anybody remembers Jared Nunnery, who's a tree warden, he came before this board a couple times, and Dave had his famous saying of, what are you going to pull your tooth for before you need to? And then the ash trees are, um, and the reason you do that now, because it's knocking on our door, and two years ago, the select board added $5,000 a year to the highway budget for hazard tree removal. It used to be seven, now it's 12. Is because it hits so quick. Within a five year window, all the ash trees are, are gone once the investigation gets here. So, <clears throat> and you can see that from other places. And if you know, and my question to Mark was, he was trying to find ash trees on what we thought was a high, Ratio road. I don't know what did you get end up going back out there? Well, I didn't, but I haven't seen in like pretty short rain over. Like, I drive right that road all the time, and I can't been looking for them. I can't find them. Plenty of elm <laughs> dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elm is really taking a beating. Yeah, my, all the way up 100. And I've seen the green, I have, oh, yeah, I have. the green yeah. metallic, nice, bright green, yeah. almost fluorescent green. Yeah. Shelly took a picture of one. Yeah, there's two that look alike. Okay. One, one's the ash borer, one's not. But. So I guess my recommendation is we don't have... It doesn't seem like we have to have a lot of ash Yeah, we, well, we don't have a very... It's a good idea, but we don't have a specific plan for what road we're going to hit, how we're going to do it, and all that, because we've deferred it. So we don't have a plan that's ready for the grant. What, whatever happened to them? The one of the union kids that were going to... They did that. So did? Yeah, on the website, there's a... Uh, ash borer preparedness plan which is which jared wrote and in the back of that is the inventory that the high school kids did so it's part of the plan that that uh, we have available uh but it's not implemented yet so part of the implementation is we, were, we agree that when dave was having his comment to watch and see what happens mm -hmm. the only difference in five years is it's all around lamoille county that's the biggest difference if you go to the state website You'll see the infestation zones are kind of circling the county coming in from Canada, New York, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. And we're just the we're the lucky ones that are far enough north and center, I guess, geographically, that it's taken a while. Hasn't gotten us yet. I went to a seminar five years ago on that, and they told everybody to start cutting that. Cut. Nobody yeah, wanted right. to. Right. No, but we'll get, we're going to get caught up in it at some point. So what Mark has done over the last couple of years is look at hazard trees in general. Right. An old maple, whatever that was leaning over the road. Okay. We did Barnes Road last year. Yeah. Uh, did you get that one on Cleveland, on Centerville by Rooney's? That big no, maple. We got that one yet. We got some of them. The Kinshire too, really. So you got the twelve thousand a year for general hazard trees. <clears throat> is what we want to make sure we get done every year. Sorry, Brian. Sorry, I caught it. Yeah. You didn't need okay. So anyway, that's a different. That's an opportunity that I don't think we're quite ready for. Yeah. Okay. Phew. Okay, there are five. 
Okay, we're speeding up, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's the actually um, the police services, and this is I called I called Roger about, and here we are, and, and they're back, which is good, because um, we started like maybe a year ago when we were talking with the the three towns with Roger um, about what we need to come up with is a uh, is a sustainable way, affordable way for for our for our police services, and um, we're going to put together a different group and start working on it. And um, Roger had uh, had agreed that for budgeting, he said in doing that, that he would do a. Uh, uh, well, then we got to a bid, but we think if whatever the town budget is doing, so we're doing <coughs> two and a half, three percent a year. We do that for those three years while we take time to develop a comprehensive plan. Then, with everything that that is has been happening in the rest of the world and Black Lives Matter and police violence and the concerns, um, a group started over in Johnson that wanted to meet with with the sheriff and find out how they dealt with a whole variety of things. Mm -hmm. This is separate from the talking about sustainability. Um, that that uh, Roger apparently had a, had a very good meeting with them, and um, that reinvigorated Johnson to say, okay, we should put together an independent group on this, just looking at the sustainability, and of course talking about that and looking out in the future, <coughs> what does the community expect for police services when we want the whole thing? So um, <laughs> Johnson was inspired because they had a large group of citizens breathing down their neck, I think. Um, they put this out, um, you see, on the Front Porch Forum, that they were looking for a couple of volunteers to do a group to, to study the whole thing. And their their thought was that we, that you have a couple of citizens do it, that you not have. Select board members can join, Rogers the liaison if he wants to, but the goal is to have, like, so you'd end up with six community members who'd be working with Roger on this. Um, so I guess what I'm looking in, in you can see they, uh, Johnson shipped out to us, we can, we can use the same thing, but to, you know, put something on front porch forum and see if we can get a couple of volunteers that are, that would be interested in doing this. And if, uh, and if we don't get any volunteers, then it'll probably be Roger and I. <laughs> <clears throat> so I guess let's see. I guess what we need is a motion to, to advertise to, to advertise for this and look for and if, and then if a couple of a uh, couple of folks are interested, Roger, you and I can talk to them, and then I guess just the authority or just they were they were sort of hoping that um, that they'd get this group started. I mean, now it'll be the middle of September when we're meeting. They're hoping they get going in early September. So, um, we'll, yeah, you can give us probably a short, like, do front porch this week, a couple weeks for people. Yeah, to, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a really quick, because if people would be interested or not, we could take a couple front porch postings out. Yeah. Along the lines, exactly what Johnson did. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll see what we have. Mm -hmm. and, see, and see what we get. Yeah. Uh, so Kim just texted. And she has ready. some grant that she's working on too for a with a state of Vermont that's due at the end of the month. So we may need a Okay. If we can get a well right if we, if we, if we can get a timing and do a few things before the Yeah, end of the that's month. right. Well we're gonna have something with the with the, paving with, with the culverts again too. So All right. That sounds good. We'll, we'll get something special. Okay. Um so I got a motion in a second. You can second it. Trust me. I don't even know what it is. No. I was in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Citizen volunteers for the Sustainable Police Services Study Group. Yeah. From the Sustainable from the Police group. Study Group. Yeah, just an ad. Long term. I guess the key word is long term. Not we usually we have a committee that does annual budgeting review. Yeah. This is more like multiple years. Yeah. What yeah. Is yeah. This is looking. Need? How do we create a sustainable funding? Right. Yeah. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 This time. Anybody opposed? Okay. Aye. Aye. Same. Oh yeah, that's right. Barrel shot will volunteer you into it. <laughs> He's here anyways. Yep. I'm going to say, you're more than welcome to stay this meeting in the office. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Get well again. Good. Really helpful. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Okay. The cloud estate. Oh, jeez. So, the donations. There is no such thing as free. <laughs> donations, right? Now, there's a parallel proposal going on at the same exact time with the town attorney, which is the cemetery easement on right. Grimes Road. Right. <clears throat> so that's going to be a free donation from the Jones Farm to the town for an easement. And that allows the cemetery commissioners to come around the right side or east side of the cemetery to get into the back. So that's the purpose there. It's still going to cost about $1,000 between the town attorney's time and the Vermont uh, Land Trust has a, SME, a fee to process their side because they have all sorts of grant conditions on the big two or 300 acre piece up there. Yeah. So it's not going to go over 1000 but it's not free again because you want to do it the right way and get the legal deed to it, right? <clears throat> On the cloud estate, it's really doesn't seem to make sense on the surface. Two thousand dollars for a hundred dollar piece of property. Yeah. yeah. So, so I think I wrote in my summary note the only <coughs> benefit to the cloud estate is the avoidance of future costs, which is like almost like the teeth pulling thing. <laughs> you know, do you do you pay more now so that you don't need easements that you? Gain control. You may the, need someday. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Or do you or, and gain control of the dry hydrant, which right. is in a great location because it hits all four roads in another. Right. <clears throat> that's your choice. I mean, I just I, that's how I, that's the difference between looking at something free and then having to pay. And would they would the trust pay half or nothing? Right now they said nothing, which really lowers the town interest. <laughs> but I want to be done with it because the town attorney, their attorney in Canada are all <laughs> wanting to be done with it as well. Good. I think we're done with it. We thank you very much. We don't need it. And they can offer to sell it to the the neighbor there. Mark Right. Yeah. Okay. I, had to so I just want to be done with that. That's yeah. Fine. Okay. Yeah. So we need uh, okay. do we need an official motion to be done no, with No, I'd say no action taken. Not, no okay. action taken. Well, except that we don't want it. That's, there is an action we're saying we're done. Uh, you could be affirmative like that. Yeah. 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 And just vote so, so vote to not accept the donation. Right. So right. I, can, I can write that in. Okay. Make a motion about that. I don't think yeah. you really can. So move. What? I don't think you can. No. You can't make a motion in the negative. You cannot do something. In the negative. You can make a motion to accept yeah. it and defeat it. But you can't make a motion not to accept it. Yeah, no, I've heard that. that. That's what. That's what I was. <coughs> well, you're not you're, <coughs> taking no action is a right. denial of their request. That's right. But you can make a motion to accept it. You can say no. You could. You can make a motion to tell the town attorney not to spend another dollar on the cloud estate transaction. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's what we need. Yeah, that's what we, that's need. What we need. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's the motion. Cut the bleeding. Because because you you want to have something that. So it doesn't look as though you're just ignoring it. And, and if they wanted to pay all the costs and donate it, then that, that motion yeah. is fine. That's right. 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 Okay. So we've got a motion to have the attorney spend no more money on this, on, this, on the cloud estate. Sure. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Brian. Brian's been a champion here. Oh, boy. Now, what am I into now? This is a <laughs> the cloud. Oh, Guyon. Yeah. Okay, that's an easy one. Okay, so I went up and met with uh, Al Spitzer, and uh, he gave me a little history on stuff and uh, what needs to be done and stuff like that. Right now, he was looking to uh, spend get spend some money, some of the money that was allocated, and downstairs in the basement of the hall. Um, actually, should we wait because he's the liaison oh, yeah, he's right. for okay. for that? So I'll wait and I'll explain that in just a moment. Oh. Do we have some errors and omissions from the? Yeah, I have to go upstairs and get it. It's on the. Oh, okay. And uh, Julie's desk. So I'll, I'll need a five minute to okay. print some stuff off for you.
How would I obtain minutes from the select board from back in 2016? It might be online. Okay, I didn't know if I would be. You know, well, you go a, back on the website. There's archive minutes. Okay, okay. So you don't find what you're looking for. Then. Yeah. So we don't need him. No. <laughs> <laughs> we need him so right. yeah, yeah, um, yeah. With the uh, guy on Valley. Uh, I met with Al Spitzer, and Al uh, um, was telling me about uh, getting the building secured for uh, of any rather large holes and stuff like that uh, that are pre-existing right now in the basement area. Um, where the windows are, some of them are boarded up, some of them are still windows, but most of them are enclosed, but there's gaps in them. And wherever the stone foundation is, the old stone foundation, some of that stone has come away from the wall and it needs to be sealed up. What he wants to do is more or less pour, um, put some plywood up against and pour a sill up, a, up to the window so it's a nice flat surface for where the window is going to be and it will seal any air coming in, in there. And uh, um, he's bought um he asked about buying uh some bags of factory and he, he's already done this he's already bought it some spray foam and he's um <laughs> what's that well he that that's part of the the whole thing is we we went we went through that and and uh uh i sent an email out saying that uh, i thought it was appropriate for that so with that being <laughs> said while it was there there was uh moisture on the floor on either side and more on the side as you face the building to the left and um that yeah and so uh the uh something's going to be done to um keep the water from going into that basement and he agreed with it and he said that in the winter time in there he's been in there and there's actually frozen ice in that basement on the stone, on the stone wall in there. So there's uh, water coming in, uh, leaching in there. Uh, at first he talked about, uh, you know, sealing it up, but you can't, you gotta go from the outside and stop it from going in. So um, one idea is is to, uh, what's that? What'd you say? Oh, this building is beginning to be a nightmare. And uh, is to, um, uh, excavate along the edge of the, the building and put in some drainage and stone so the water hits and it comes down and keep it from splashing up on the building. Apparently, it was known prior because um, Al showed me that they'd taken some plastic and laid it down and, and tacked it along the building. So when it was splashing, it was going up against it, stuff like that. Basically, they just need some sort of a way that for the such, such large roof, the runoff from it will go down, hit the pipe and go out the back onto it. So uh, prior to too much more spending, they better secure the foundation of the, uh, of the building. It's not falling in. I don't want anybody to get that idea it's falling in. It's just that water is leaching through into the basement and it can cause problems. You know what, we all know what, uh, Expanding and contraction happens with freezing. Well, he can uh, he can touch it with all stones in there until he patches the wall somehow. It's still going to get in there. Yeah, and one thing we we'll uh, get that flex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Spray the whole thing with that flex. Well, I mean, yeah. The yeah. Foundation, the, the stones, you know, probably the mortar and stuff. I mean, you can dig that down and put all the drainage you want and the stones in there. Unless he covers it with a membrane of some sort, he so that it goes down to the a membrane or something. Yeah. Uh, I get a guy that's usually on TV there that yeah, that's right. That does that concrete type of work and stuff. See what really needs to be done. And you put stone all of them those leak plastic. And of course, um, uh, you're not going to know until you excavate it, anyways. What you're going to find in there, unless right. you've got the X-ray vision. Uh, I would but, get uh, that guy that does. Uh, sealed basements and stuff. I've had him, I don't know the name of him now. Yeah, but that's stone foundation, right? Yeah, stone. When he seals basement, I think he seals concrete, Raj. Okay, well, maybe he could. There's a company called Tri State Basement. 
and they deal with that type of stuff? I can't think that they it's, out, it's out of it's out of uh, I mean, it's not going to cost them nothing to get him there and ask him. That's right. You know, and I think they ought to that but as far was, as they're planning for the future and before they put money into the windows and all this well, other yeah, stuff I mean, that, yeah. that they should or earn the roof. Or the foundation, you know what you say. You start digging, you start digging next to a stone foundation on the outside to put a to put a wall in and stuff in and you're asking for it. They could they could form it and pour concrete right up to the stone too. They could they could just put a piece of play. I've done it. You, you take it and you just uh, come out six eight, six inches or so, three inches even, from a stone wall and put a form up against it. Come in there and form and pour it, and then you taper the edge of it so any water comes running right off, and that seals the wall. That's not you can do it from the inside. No, no, you do it from the outside. Yeah, could you do it from the inside? No, you would. It wouldn't be advantageous to do it because you still got that water coming from the back side of it. He's going to have a hard time doing that from the outside, too, because it's pretty close to all the trees. It is, and that's one thing we discussed, you, too. We have to it. use one of those mini excavators, possibly. Yep. might be able to get in there to do that. But you can get chainsaws and make them every day. So it's well, that's up to the guy to cut his trees. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, the guy's willing to cut the trees out, you're all, you know, you can get in there. But I don't know. But that's the worst thing the there is for trees growing inside the stone foundation because yeah. the roots are growing oh, yeah, right. inside. Yeah. It is. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but so, so, so it, the 29th. I'm sorry, what's that? Is that what you're, this is not a good He went over the list with you for the 29th. Is that what you're talking about? The work party? Yes, that work party. Oh, yeah. yeah, and he he may try to get in and do some of the see, some of this himself here ahead of time. Now, and that's the thing. And I say, there's your next big grant. Have they put any grant in yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a. Yeah, I mean that'd be the next they step. They can't stop that water. They don't need going yeah, any further yeah, with that thing. Yeah. Need to do this, and then there's their next grant. You just got to do it a, a piece at a time. Oh, it's a lot of work over there. Yeah. Every you hear something about that, though, you have to do this before you do this. You... Well, that's it. You know, with, with any of these historical buildings, and that's why it you takes still a lot of time. You know, let's be done. And it takes all these Besides, you do something different in that parking area. You ain't going to get much a, parking in there, you know? A, right? dollar I wouldn't spend any money unless I had a, an agreement. So now they've got a camper in there. You can't get in there. there. I stopped the up there looking at that. There, you can't even park two cars in there. Not now. You couldn't before. Well, yeah, you could have. And they cleaned that all out back, but they went and put a camper in there, and they went and put a, one of those plastic sheds up. But for that, after they cleaned that out, you could have got probably you know, maybe eight cars in there. <laughs> eight cars. That's eight. Um, but I think their idea was to park down by bullets. Eight, yeah, I eight think cars come to noise. That's it. Yeah, so, uh, there ain't no park in there. Okay. But this is just for the. the that's the update. Yeah, that's, that's the update. It's just like we just kind of. Because I. Again, because I. Great. Let me look to you. It's important here. for us to know what's going on. Right, yes, I keep it. Okay, oh, all right. We need to take a five minute break here while oh, okay. he goes. I got town orders. We can do a town order. I'm going to print those out, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. We got a five minute break here. Last time we get that thing all solved out, you thought that drainage. I told him we're going to work to begin with. Boy, I think it's not. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah. We're back to errors and emissions. Okay. We got uh who's this? <coughs> I'm going to the owner. Leslie Rollins, the life estate of Kay Walker and Kay Grogan. There's no there's no where is it? Got 183 wildlife lane. Possibly. The barn on property. Yeah, that's on. It's wildlife lane is up off of Trombley Hill. Okay, just that to hear my sponsors. Ownership corrected. Usually they have a net change. Somewhere. No, right. There's a there's a net difference of a decrease in the value of eleven thousand eight hundred dollars. 
Computer error transferred and then backed out. The reason oh, there was no barn on the property. So they probably didn't think they should pay taxes on the barn that wasn't there, huh? Hard to believe. <laughs> Some people are so unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess I need a motion to accept and we'll sign it. Get back to the Sorry. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Mm -hmm. so, okay. So that was it for the emissions and errors. The emissions and errors. Cool. Okay. Here's the town orders. Have some town orders. Yeah. Order. Yeah. Well, you know, because because we just do the. It's probably just because we're here. We need the stuff over. 500. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, Allison said. If you have any questions on the over 500, to give her a call tonight. She had a technical difficulty with getting the copies to you. I might have you too if you have a question. If you have a question, feel free. I heard you were doing pretty good with this case. That's what I need. So we all send everybody. We apparently have a nice little fence down on the rail trail now. Where the people were before? Uh -huh. Well, did you get rid of them? Yeah. <laughs> did? No. A lot of traffic up back. Still traffic up there? Yeah. See another car go up there tonight? No, we're just getting here. And it was going to go up there. I'm going to make it instead. I'll go up there after these. Your big spotlight? We have, I, I, I sent you a copy of the picture. I was going to swing by. I've got the fence that's down there. Okay. And I don't know, we may ship that on to, to the agency. Yeah. Uh, say, uh, Kind of. Well, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, You have a question? I know. Okay. I don't know if we can answer it, but we can call Allie. Yes. I need to you. Did we, let's see, it said it stopped recording. Are we? It's all off or on? It's still up. Yeah, it's all recorded. Yeah, it actually booted me out. So we got it on YouTube, so we'll have a tape there. So we can forget about the phone. Thank you. Okay, okay, I got a question on some of these that that, that, that really spike high. And uh, Christian Langlois. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably election work. It was a combination of stuff where she worked a lot of overtime one one week. The election. But that time came out of a different it was ballots. I think it was it was prepped for the election. Yeah, yeah. be prepped because this this is only someone one to someone thirty one. Yeah, that's that's prepped. For yeah. Them. What's the figure? We we it was getting all the ballots out, but then all of them came in and they we could we Oh yeah, we had all that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that concrete poured up here yet? Yeah. Concrete poured for what? For the box, sir? For the... I turned that over to the village group. I, I don't know. Go. I haven't been up here to look. No, you said the village group. 
What's that? I turned it over to the village crew, and so I don't know if it's been poured or not. That box, you don't know if it's in place or not. I yeah. it up there. <laughs> <in> the front yard. <laughs> <laughs> You have a week number? Oh, wait. Uh, <clears throat> like pay period ending a certain date? Oh, it says the whole thing. Check. Uh, I've got some of those notes here. If you could pull a week out of there. It's it in, the in first, August, right? It must be the first week in uh, July. First week of July. 7 1 to 7 31. We had that storm. We had that storm in Yeah, I had that storm at work. What storm? They had that wind storm at work. I see it when Ron had it on the email there. Yeah, but the rest of the guys didn't get it. I don't know. I can look back on the email. Remember you sent me that email that. They were still cleaning up brush from the night before. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm looking through the old time sheets for that. Okay. I'm just thinking yeah, right. that was what it's right. Wind yeah, blew pretty good down here. <clears throat> Probably blew up hills pretty good. Sign that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a that's another one. There are two of them. I guess I know. Right. Okay. Let me. Let me. Okay. You find anything? Just help me no, give you a check number. Yeah. No, it's a date. I have a, my records are by the date that he worked. That. Okay. So I don't. I'm just standing really quick. I can, I can figure out the date. What's that? The <laughs> date? Do I have to go away with the I'm looking at the warrant. The date's up here. Date zero, three or 31, 20. No, right here. From someone on it. I'm like, yeah. Someone should be perfect in the law. First, second, third, fourth. Yeah, right. Page right. So the first week in July. Yeah, so it'd be, it'd be a holiday in there, too. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about check number 5790, so I know what you're talking about. You're still on the one for Ryan? 5790, yep. Okay. Okay. That's all right, I'll get an answer for you. I, you know, when there's storms, I never, when you go back, I never remember when you were there. Like, <laughs> ben, okay. I don't think about them no more. I don't care. I can't believe it's the middle of August. Oh. I don't believe it. It's stuff. Man. Why are you doing 
grandkids going back to school and stuff. I can't, you know, I can't. Harder not going back. He's not going to go in and He said it's going to be too confusing. We're trying to go two days and then three days at home. Then back to two days of school and three days to learn on the computer. You smart to live with it. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, this, this is one of the things. Oh, yeah. it's education. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not just kids, but it's it. Chris and I were talking during the, because she's got three kids. So her oldest is just going into junior high. Who's that? Kristen. Oh, that yeah. Is. Okay, so her oldest is going into junior high and is totally terrified. Has no idea what's going on. Yeah. How do you do this and how do you do that? And what, you know, that's a, that's a scary enough transition anyway. Then she's got like a, and there's a kid in elementary school. And then there's, oh, a, there's a little kid. And they won't be all by the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. she, she don't know what she's going to do. She, she, I mean, she just, she just, yeah, just, and I've told Ron we need to get through this, but we, he needs to come up. We need to have Kim and Christian and Natalie come in and we sit down and say, okay, oh, we, need, we need a plan here. This has got to be, okay. this has got to be reasonable for her, okay? But, but you don't. I mean, what do you do when you, you know, I said to you, what do you do? I don't know. I've never been through it. No, hold on. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I just, I can't, you know. Well, there's a lot of families in high school. Yeah, yeah. You know, we got Brian Dunn and one of them. I just reviewed it on yeah. here, so I don't need to look at it. Okay. Oh, sign it. There you go. Okay. Oh, you see. Oh, your eyes are still going to be pretty good. They're going to be sharp if I keep reading that. <laughs> Sometimes we'll have a iPad or whatever they call them. Uh, okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So I need a motion to accept, accept the town orders. So, so second. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 We'll get. We'll get information about that one so we understand what it is. Yes, you will. Um, review the minutes. I didn't print them out and bring them, but I already did that. Now I like that. I wish my phone was a little bit bigger, right? Oh, no, that, I know, that's that, right. It is wrong. Right. Uh, I don't get my eyes yet. Because you don't have to anything enough sometimes to try to stretch it. And then, yeah. then I lose the setting the top way. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, we've got to review the minutes, or if we haven't looked at them, we can put them off till the next time. I, I, I reviewed them and looked at them. They were fine. I didn't print them out, though. Yeah. I did. Okay. They were fine. Okay. You need to accept them? So moved. For 720 and 803 in the second. So moved. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Yeah, I did sustain. Right, right you sustain, yeah. right. Okay. Um, Executive session? Or do we want to touch okay. anything else? There's a tax return thing that you said. Or is that yeah, it's the three things. There's only the tax attorney and two other really quick things. Okay. Let's do those and then we'll. We have a request for another bottle drive on the front yard, which I guess was very successful for that other group. They're doing a yeah. fundraiser for change um, rodeo thing. Um, this one is for. Well, that's a big one for 2,000 pounds. This one is for the La Loyola Union Varsity Girls soccer team. And it's going to be held September 19th. From 8:30 a.m. to 1:30 p.m. If the board is okay with that. Yeah, where about is it? Right up here. Right up here. Yeah. 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 It, it was great. It's a great place for them. And, and it's because of the vision, being able to see it from the road. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Because the school wouldn't be too far, be too far back, and well, how they, many signs right you put right up there. there. Yeah. yeah. No, they had a they had a great turnout. No problems. Okay. They're good so to that, go. That one's good. Good to go. Um. On September 21st, which is this Friday at 12.30. No, not this Friday. Sorry, sorry, August 21st. <laughs> no. <laughs> this Friday. <laughs> Yay. At 12.30 at the North Hyde Park Guyon Valley Hall. They're working on a planning grant with regional planning. 
to deal with traffic calming on Route 100, which is a battle for a lot of Vermont villages. So the state has agreed to come to Hyde Park, their planning division and traffic people, to meet with the regional planning mm -hmm. and the Guyan Valley Hall committee people that are working on okay. the traffic calming. Yep. So Al Spitzer said he's going to be there, and we need one other one. I don't know, Brian or Roger, both of you want to. What, what is it? 12.30 on Friday. They're gonna Friday? Be, yes, they're going to be a water bill first and then arrive at 12.30. 30. Waterville has a similar problem with 108. I will be there, although my rehab schedule uh, Wednesday, so I think I'll be able to be there. But I don't know, I'll call for Yeah, call there. me if you can, and then we'll. Okay, do. but right now I don't know my schedule. I go up my first day is Wednesday, and then I'm going to put me on the schedule. Yep, thank you. If you can handle the stress here, you don't have to worry about a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> That's really well, it's just, it, is, it isn't just treadmill. It's all this other bunch of baloney. You know, what do you oh, mean? My dad went through it. Um, what kind of, you know, you, everything. Don't start right now, we're just cooking. <laughs> yeah. That'll get you killed. What do you do around the house? Do we help with the dishes? Do we help make the bed? Do you vacuum? All the whole bunch of. That's all we need to know. Stop right there. Yeah. So I called him up and asked him, do you mean if I've done this in the past or am I doing it now? Well, doing it now, it's kind of hard to do anything now when the doctor tells you not to do nothing. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just. Five pages of questions. A question. Right. Well, just, I'll just bring the thing with you. We'll fill it out here when you get here. There you go. <laughs> okay. We're glad you're here, though. Yes, we are. You got anything else wrong? Uh, Delivery tax attorney. Uh, we had a brief discussion a while back on a Michael Bartlett property, uh, where we had to engage the David Rue, who's the town attorney, to fix some notice issues and uh, come up with a plan to resolve some um, difficulties with the tax sale that was held last fall. So that's on a path to some resolution. You have a uh, yeah. notice to sale that's been uh, publicized and somewhere right around Labor Day, uh, you'll need to meet um, and have a vote to sell it back to them. Uh, we'll know by then whether there's a 5% petition to call a town vote, and then that would be the decision. If there's no petition, then the board still has to take some action. There's a hundred dollar discrepancy in some of the accounting, which you'll have to address at that time, whether you want that from him or whether you want to kind of waive that. Um, but part of the question, and, and this came up, like I said, because of this case, was whether or not the town wanted to interview or switch to link with tax attorneys. Angela uh, Ross has been five, maybe even longer than five or six years working with Kim. I, think probably, I don't know who she worked with before then, but um, sometimes when you have a problem, you want to think about who you're working with. Sometimes you say this is a one-off and she's, you know, uh, providing free deeds, drafting and services for Michael Bartlett's transfer as a way to kind of compensate some of the difficulties we had to do with, with, with figuring that all out. So. Um, so the board decision, the you know, Kim in this case is an appointed delinquent tax collector. So you sort of control the people she works with, which right now you agreed to work with Angela in the past. I, I think Kim's okay with Angela, but if she understands it's, she's not recommending a change in other words. And I, and I think the board just sort of deferred the question of what do we do? We have another tax sale every November and some of the prep work starts now, you know, this, and end of August, September window. Not that the tax sale couldn't be pushed if you want to have more discussion on it, but I didn't want to have, and I don't think Kim wanted to continue with Angel unless the board was ready to do that, or whether the board wanted to interview David Rue's office, who also could provide the services, or in, interview both of them. I don't know if you anybody's ever interviewed the, in a, no, the town know. attorney. I mean, we have been sort of pulling in town attorney services to 
now we're down, we used to have four or four or five different attorney firms we worked with. Uh, Spokes Foley, uh, I, I can't remember all the names, but anyway, David Rue is kind of gravitating towards the main town attorney instead of having three or four. We worked with Paul Gillies and Montpelier, and we worked with you know, David Polo way back when I first came here. So some, to some degree, it's better to have one town attorney or one firm. It's just, it's a clear line of communication. There's one right, attorney right, right. sort of keeping up with stuff. Mm -hmm. In this case, we have, currently we have uh, David Rue's office and Angela Ross. Uh, we had Paul Gillies managing the Ma Maynard case, yep. but that's working towards a quick resolution that's hopefully right, in the next right. 90 days. So that will right. be the last thing he was working on. So it's kind of up to you. I don't you know if you want time to think about it. Uh, we'd have to tell Kim to delay the tax sale just a little bit. The policy says hold it in November, but that's your policy. So you, there's no, you know, for COVID reasons, you might want to push it to December just to give people a little more time to get their well, yeah, right. feet. Right. That's another little, that's a little right there. But, so and we haven't had a delinquent tax problem that we know of. So that's, mm -hmm. that, and we haven't had a request, you know, please don't put my property up to tax sale. Well, it is where it is. So I don't, I can hear uh -huh. The only thing is that, did he pay all, did he pay you guys for the water? I mean, yeah, actually, we put everything in. Yeah, we put it yeah. all in there. So I'm going to get a, there. I'll get a check from you. Unless that's where a hundred dollars comes from. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I sent all that in there. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, we so added, we added a bunch of stuff up and, and it is what it is. I, I think that I need, yeah, but you to, should, yeah, I need yeah. to know what months the town paid because so I can bill him. Right. Some, okay. Whenever the, the, you guys made a sale back to him. Yeah, well, I, I think after the sale, we'll settle up just like a closing okay. you know, like a statement account. Or, you know, so you haven't got it closed yet? No, it's got the 30 day notice ends uh, so at the end September of the 5th, I think. Okay. So right after Labor Day, we'll have a closing closing, which is really the board's vote to sell it, including settlement of what we think is settled and what needs to be um, forgiven, which is the $100 discrepancy. But that will be all one big statement that you'll look at that meeting. So it's not that. Yeah. So some of the some of the errors that we found were errors in process and procedure. And that's what created this sort of undoing that we had to do with Michael Bartlett. Well, I think the problem was one piece of property was in his girlfriend's name. The other piece was in his name. Well, that that wasn't that and wasn't the notice. There were some references yeah. in the deed that were not referencing the right property, and then there was a notice issue where we we didn't have proof that he physically received notice, which is a, kind of a standard thing that you're you got to have something in your hand that the sheriff gave you or he signed in front of you. And we well, didn't. Why, why don't we just slow it down and we can we'll figure it out. I mean, she's taking care of this one, so we're... Yeah, I mean, uh, Angela would come in and talk to you about it if you wanted to, or she, I'm sure she would probably interview if you wanted to make a decision right. fresh for a new delinquent tax right. collector. Uh, but Kim needs to know because she's on a right. schedule, so, it, and that's your policy on the schedule, not... Yeah, we can slow it, you know, given... I mean... An, I mean, another month for... If people are having trouble paying their taxes, that's not going to, you know... The world isn't going to come to an end, so I don't sort of defer it and then maybe talk to both of them or you know, chat with Kim as well. Yeah, I mean, you could talk to just talk to Kim, see how she feels. You can talk to Angela if you if somebody right. wanted to be designated, talk to Angela. Yeah. You know, sometimes that's an expediting way to, to is, get it. Is, is there any pattern to help how uh, taxes are coming in? Uh, Oh, geez, I thought the last time we talked to Kim, she said it was higher revenue yeah. than last time. Yeah, I mean, that's that's yeah, we got another payment coming in, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. right yeah. but people don't have their extra checks now. August, but lot, August 31, you know, your, your meeting in September, you'll get a good feel yeah. for that. Because based on the traffic that I've seen over the last three or four days, I think everybody's back on the road. Do, oh, we want to see that 10 minutes trying to get across the road. Oh right. man, it's like everybody yeah, came out of the woodwork are. trying to get yeah. around, especially yesterday, Sunday. We drove around a little bit, there's people no, everywhere. No, I think, well, that's good. People get, yeah, like, yeah, very yeah. active. It's yeah. all, yeah. and coming in tonight, yeah. it was the same thing. I could, I no. could remember driving the lines no, of traffic, no. and that's that happened today from no. Jericho to no. that's good. I think it's good. Vermont's done a good job, yeah.
Okay. So we'll do that. And then, like I said, if somebody wants to talk to Angela, or if you want David to come in for a part. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll check it out. out. We can see. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. I got one thing on, uh, on the center roof. Four corners. Yep. Three telephone poles up. That telephone pole has been cut off and hanging in there. Yeah, forever. For, for three months. And I asked Mark about it. He said we can't get hold of the telephone company to, to get it down. Yeah, that's true. And I think it did. And that, yeah. that right away, hang it. Yeah. That's the telephone company. Can they cut it off closer to the top? You, you, no, I'm you Call somebody. You get them in it, North Carolina. I'll, cut, I'll email yeah. um, Mark Kehoe and ask him how to get, expedite that. Yeah, he gave us some advice last time on a Garfield Road. Oh, okay. Thing. Okay. So, but that's right. been down there since. Yeah. It's so just long north long. of Four yeah. Corners. Two telephone yeah. Yeah. From, yeah. Uh, Let me just see what he has to. Yeah. Maybe they've got a do not work on roads policy now or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess we need to go into executive session to talk about the contract. Yes, I have to shut down the cameras. If you want to make a motion to go yeah. in with second. Okay. Everyone ready? Volunteer to say, say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? 